In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure thresholding in DX NetOps Performance Management. The threshold configuration is under Administration, Monitored Items Management, Threshold Profiles. Threshold profiles are sets of rules that generate performance-based events. In this case, I'm going to create a new profile under the Test Profile folder and create new profile. The top section here includes all of the meta information about the threshold profile. I have to give it a name. I picked the folder on the previous screen, and I want this profile to be enabled. Then we get to the meat of the threshold profile. I need to create a new rule. Event rules are the logical operators that define when the system should generate an event. In this case, I'm going to create events from the interface utilization. And like with most interface metrics, we differentiate between in and out. So I'll pick the interface metric family and select utilization in. What I want to do is to create an alert whenever the traffic on this interface is high. But how do we define what high is? We could use a simple fixed value, say 80%. But NetOps includes more sophisticated options that use the baseline that is calculated per hour per day over time. Rules can define standard deviations or percent deviations from that baseline to generate events. In this case, I'm going to choose standard deviation and set two standard deviations from the baseline as the condition to generate a threshold event. However, that could be noisy, especially if the interface generally has low traffic volume or low variance. For example, if your baseline is only 30% utilized and the standard deviation is only 1 or 2%, you may see thresholds for as low as 32% utilization, which isn't something you want to act on. So to solve that problem, I'll add a second condition. When you add additional conditions to an event rule, the threshold engine uses and logic, meaning every condition must be true to create a threshold event. For the second condition, I'm going to select utilization in and assign a fixed value of above 70%. What this means is that if the interface has a low utilization but a sharp increase, say from 20% to 30%, you won't get an alert. But for an interface that typically has high utilization, say one that always runs around 80%, it will only generate an alert if there's a major change based on the baseline. This is also useful in cases where you have something like a daily site backup that runs outside of typical business hours but saturates the network at the time. You don't want to see a daily threshold event because you know it's going to happen. And so the standard deviation rule helps you there. Similarly, if there's a big change but the utilization is still low, having the fixed value requirement stops the system from generating an event. Next, I'm going to create another example rule for this profile. Each profile can have multiple rules that you want to assess against a given set of monitored items. The next rule will use utilization out. So I'll select the interface metric family again and pick utilization out. Normally, you might want to have matching rules for in and out for interface behavior, but I'm going to demonstrate some of the other functionality on this rule. Sometimes in the network, and even more so for CPU and memory metric families, we see temporary utilization spikes, and then things get back to normal before you need to take action. To prevent threshold events in such scenarios, you can change the settings for window and duration. I'll do a simple rule here, above 80%. When we assess the data against an event rule, we look at the time period defined by the window. This is in seconds, and the default is five minutes, which aligns to our default five minute polling. That means if you're using the default, any single poll that violates the event rules produces a threshold event. In this case, we want to look at a longer period, so I'll increase this to 900 seconds, or 15 minutes and set the duration to 600 seconds, or 10 minutes. What this means is that each poll cycle, when we get the new results for that interface, we will look back at the previous 15 minutes of data 
based on the window. And if for any 10 minutes, meaning two pulse cycles defined by this 600 seconds, it violated the 80% utilization, as we define in the rule, the system generates a threshold event. We also have the ability to modify the clear conditions for a threshold event. The default is to clear the event as long as the conditions for the raise are no longer true. However, you may want to set a different value. For example, I'll set the clear at 70%, where the threshold is 80%. That way, if there's a spike and then the value drops to just below the level of the threshold, we won't clear the event until someone has a chance to go investigate. Like raise events, clear events also respect the window and duration. That means for this rule, 10 of the previous 15 minutes, or 2 of 3 pulse cycles, would need to be below 70% to clear the event. A couple of other things to keep in mind regarding window and duration. Consider the pull interval of the devices you're monitoring. The default is 5 minute polling. That's where 10 minute duration and 15 minute window type rules will help reduce the number of events in the system. Or you could even set longer rules, for example, 30 minutes out of an hour. But you don't want to create rules with really long duration. Uh, for example, a 12-hour or 24-hour rule is going to pull in a lot of data and therefore have a heavy impact on the performance of the system. Because every five minutes, you would need to pull in 24 hours of data for a 24-hour rule. So you really want to keep that down to no more than an hour or two at most with five-minute data. However, you may also implement fast polling for some parts of the network. For example, where you want to have up-to-the-minute visibility on network availability or latency. So you may have one-minute polling configured, especially on some critical interfaces. In this case, you want to be really careful about setting higher duration and window rules because the threshold engine will have to assess 25 times as much data compared to 5-minute polling. With a 2-hour window and 1-minute polling, that would mean every minute for each item, the system would need to request 120 data points from the database. Whereas with 5-minute polling, you'd only be looking at 24 data points every 5 minutes. I'm going to save the threshold profile. The second part of threshold configuration is assigning the threshold profile to a group. Once associated, the system applies the event rules in the threshold profile to the monitored items in all of the associated groups as soon as new poll data comes into the system. To assign a group, select the threshold profile, navigate to the Groups tab, and click Manage. Pick your groups from the group tree. For this example, I'll add New York to the selected groups and click OK. Now this threshold profile is going to apply the event rules we defined to all of the items in the New York group. And that covers the basics regarding threshold profile configuration in DXNetOps.